the newly joined newly or fresher joined or already emerging technology student must aware of this in which challenges are there in the pediatric and neonatal radiography and also the we must aware about the top, topic itself first that means the challenges which kind of challenge that occurs in the department during the uh, these radiographies and the role of radiographer with what is our role in these radiographs like how we have to manage these kind of patients neonatal means the newly newly born patients and pediatric means the low age patients small age patients like uh, from 1 to 3 3 to 5 5 to 7 maximum so the objective of our lecture is today is to know the nature and behavior of the pediatric patient the use of immobilization devices for the neonates and pediatric patients and do not repeat the exam also the best image quality so the children do not reach a sense of understanding at the same predictable age the ability varies from child to child and the pediatric technologist must not assume the children will understand what is happening that means if the patient came into the department for any radiography they definitely the children patient will come along with their parents or caregiver so they must aware of that the caregiver must be remain with them with their self during the radiography and they must be aware that the pediatric patient will not understand what is going all around them all around them so the generally however the age range is between 2 to 3 most of the children can be talked through a diagnostic radiography without any immobilization or parental aid that means they know there is no any support required from the parents or caregiver if patient is 2 or 3 years we can uh, generally give them uh, some advice soft advice so that they can follow our commands and we can handle the patient uh, these patients softly the most important is a sense of trust which began at the first meeting between the patient and the technologist the first impression that the child has of the technologist is everlasting the shape and the bond of successful relationship so this is the most important task the radiographer must adopt this policy or we can say they must adopt this point that definitely they have to gain the sense of trust for before uh, from the children so that they can uh, easily handle handle them and so take the easily take the radiographs also and the successful radiographic studies are uh, depend on two things the number one the technologist as attitude and the approach to a child and the technical preparation in their in the first meeting most children are accompanied by at least one parent or caregiver the following steps are important number one introduce yourself as the technologist who will be working with this child find out what information the attending physicians has given to the parent and patient so that you can easily assess the radiograph and explain what you are going to do and what your needs will be that means we need to explain the procedure to the patient's caregiver or the parents <clears throat> because definitely the children or pediatric or neonate will not going to understand what you are going to do so definitely we have to explain the procedure to their parents so that if anything is required from them you can easily have that that means if we need to hold the patient so that parent can assess to your parent can with the holding the patient need to remove their box and remove their any ornaments on the body so the parents and caregiver caregiver can help you out so the peer fears and the competitive resistant are common reaction from a young child that we know very well the technologist must take the time to communicate to the parents and the child in language they can understand exactly what he or she is going the technologist must try to build an atmosphere of trust in the waiting room before the patient is taken into the radiographic room as i told you on your list slides this include discussing the necessity of immobilization and a last resort if child cooperation is unattainable <clears throat> so here's the example like how we can take the trust of the our child next we have to evaluate the patient parents or the caregiver role the parents in his room is in room as an observer needing support and comfort by his or her presence parents serve as a participator assisting with the immobilization devices parent is asked to remain in the waiting area or not to accompany the child into the radiography room these three points you can uh, so that the parents can assist you assist us with the radiography that means if the parents are in the radiographic room with the child definitely they has to help us in the role of they can observe the patient observe their child also they can work as the serve as the participator so that they can assist their child they need to stand here they need to they do not need to move they can assist them also if we are using any immobilization devices then they can help us to also use this kind of devices easily and if there is no any support is required from the parents and if child is uh, 
and there's some age point that he can understand your words so definitely the parents roles are not there so they should wait in the waiting area sometimes children who act fearfully and combative in the waiting room and the parents present will be more cooperative without their presence this is the time when the technologist communication skills are tested so the major and major aspect of the neonatal uh, pediatric radiography is reporting suspected child abuse most medical facilities have a procedure in place to report suspected child abuse in the past the terms used for this was battered child syndrome that is bcs but the now its term is non accidental trauma generally it is not the responsibility of the technologist to make a judgment as to whether child abuse has occurred but rather to report the facts as they are seen or suspected so if is there any child abuse patient like how we can judge these kind of patients if there is multiple fractures over there without any trauma if there is some multiple repaired fracture healed fracture we can say over there and some with the new fractures definitely is is the sign of child abuse so this sign we must aware of this uh, aware of these terms so that we can report them to our senior the judgment the final judgment will be made by the senior radiologist or senior radiologist so this is the our job to inform them so if non accidental trauma is suspected the technologist should discuss with their radiologist or other supervisors as determined by the departmental protocol laws vary uh, laws vary on technologist responsibility as it is the most important the all technologists know what their responsibility and concern concern this in the state of province and which are the working so pediatric patient in general can include in friends through children up to the age 12 to 14 <coughs> however the older children older children can be treated more like adults except for special care in cordial shielding and reduce the exposure factor because of their small size <coughs> sorry so in general pediatric radiography should always use as short exposure time and the high emit technique so that the radiation dose can be minimized and we can use the alara principle and also the image blurring can be reduced so if we have the short exposure time the patient motion artifact will be always can be minimized over there however even the short exposure time prevent the motion artifact during the exposure and constant challenge in pediatric radiography and the effective method of the immobilization and essential so generally we use two types of immobilization devices for the pediatric patient that is the tem m board and pegostat so this is the example of tem m board this device is mainly made up of perpex glass and with the some straps and the lower body of these devices are made up of carbon fiber so that they do not interact with the x rays and we can get the better image quality in low radiation rows the second device that is we use that is known as peak ostrad this is the most common device that we use for the pediatric radiograph definitely this is some kind uh, some difficult to use these devices but this is more convenient way to get the better image quality in pediatric radiography there are some details of the peak ostrad that means that the a is this is the seat bicycle bicycle type seat over there and next we have a side body clamps then we have a film holder film holder and d is the survival base e is adjustable lead shield with the markers and the f is mounting stand on wheel and the next that is g is the extra set of smaller body clamps if it is required <laughs> there are some other uh, immobilization devices we use the simplest and latest Uh, sorry simplest and least expensive devices involves with their the supplies and commonly found in the most department which are those devices those devices are like we have the tape bed sheets towel sand bags radiolucent spong blocks compression bands stockings and the ace bandage etc we can use as a immobilization devices like this is how we can use the sand bags this is uh, here you can see these are the made up of the sand and these also have the <coughs> uh, uh, comes into the variation shape very shape and the sizes and also in the weight so strong canvas type material and the children's cross sterilization place sand should be used so the coarse sand is recommended because if the bag should break open and the sand is more easily cleaned up and the chances of causing artifact on the radiograph is minimized next we have a tape and bandage the various types of gentle tape are used for the surgical procedure and uh, for the sensitive skins and the adhesive tape may shown on the radiograph and create an artifact that could absorb the anatomical part of area of interest also some patient have allergic reaction to adhesive tapes the fragile skin of infects can be injured by the adhesive tape 
unless the tape is twisted so that the adhesive surface is not against the skin. And the gauze pads can be placed between the skin and adhesive tapes, also can be used effectively. And a four inch ace bandage is best for small and friends and young children. Whereas a six inches bandage work well for other, for older children. So these are the best use for the immobilization for the legs when starting the wrapping process, being at the patient's hip and wrap down to the patient in the mid calf and don't wrap too tightly. This can work, cut off the circulation or blood circulation also. So this is how we can use these ACE tapes. So next we have a compression pad and head clamps. The compression or retention bands are valuable aid for immobilization. The compression bands, however, are more effective with the pediatric patient when it uses combination with the sandbags. It's definitely these compression band give uh, discomfort to the patient, but somehow we have to use for the chest and abdominal radiography and hip radiography. This is the better option that we can use apart from the pigo stat and tamam board. So this sand, uh, compression bands are the <coughs> most, if, most, most effective as compared to these other immobilization devices. Next, we have a weight angle block as a head clamp. These are heavily steel angle block with the thin radiolucent strong pad attached. These are relatively inexpensive to have made compared with the cost commercial available head clamps. These are very effective and versatile in mobilization, especially when we use in the combination with the sandbags or the tapes. And definitely we can use also with the patient is muffin. So what is muffified? We can discuss in later slides. We can use these clamps with the head radiography uh, for the head radiography, like we are using for the skull AP view also and also we can use these head clamps for the different par body parts emulation like we can immobilize the particular leg particular hand so that we can have the better image for it so this is the muffifying or wrapping technique by the bed sheet or towel we can use as you can see we can we have to place the bed sheet first on the like, radiographic table then we can put the patient on it and we can wrap down under the arm calves from one by one so that patient do not move and do not move their arms also also, we can use with the adhesive tapes. So these adhesive tape will be put on the bed sheet, so it will not going to directly contact with the skin. So that will be can work as it more effective. Next is the bone development on ossification. The bones of infants and small children go through with the various growth changes for the birth through the adolescence. The pelvic is the example of ossification. Changes are that apparent in the children. As I have shown, the division of the hip bones between the ilium and the ischium, the pubic evident they appear as individual bones separated by the joint space which is the cartilaginous growth region that you can see in this image they are marked by the arrows so to these kind of growths and these spaces is most important in the pediatric patient so for that we need to immobilize the patient properly so that we can compare the both side of bony surface and bony development at a one radiograph the radiographic grid should be used only when the body part examine is greater than 10 centimeter in thickness each radiology department should keep a list of specific routine for pediatric imaging exam, including the specialized view, limited examination to series, to expose to the appropriate projection and unnecessary exposure are great. So if we are using a muffing pine technique or wrapping around the patient in the bedside, we can see, then we can have the better image quality in the pelvic or for the spine and for chest and abdominal radiography. And once we talk about the bony development in the pediatric patient, so that is the most important to do the using of the emulsion device, because in bony development, this is not happened that we are going to expose the one side of the patient. Like if we, are, we want to see the bony development in the hip or pelvis joint and we are just acquiring a right hip view only that will not going to happen we have to acquire the both views like right and left in the combination of so that we can compare both views in a one radiograph and that will be easy for the physician easy for the radiologist also to report and definitely give you the better image uh, better diagnosis for the patient also so this is the most important topic that radiographer must have aware that they do not repeat the children's exam radiographic exam because if we are using a better technique, proper all emulsion devices, there is very less chances that we need to repeat the examination. But definitely, this will comes with the experience. Definitely, we, we cannot we cannot accept for that. Uh, we cannot you know assume that the newly radiographer can acquire the radiograph pediatric radiograph is uh, more easily as compared to the experience. Definitely, this will comes with the experience. So handling the pediatric patient is also a challenge, but doing a radiograph, this is a, again, uh, 
biggest challenge is the radiography so the reduction in the repeating exposure is the most important so if we are have a having a multiple radiographers more than four or five we need to find out which radiographer is best for the predatory radiograph- radiography so that we can mark this radiographer for the predatory radiography and he can teach the other radiographers how to get a better image in the radiography so that the new radiographer or other radiographer can learn and can get the experience from the experienced radiographer <laughs> so the reduction in repeat exposure exposure in the is critical especially in young children who is developing these cells and particularly sensitive to effective their radiation definitely this is the major point because the cells and bones are on the growing stage if we are giving the extra radiation dose definitely it will going to later on it will going to the harm to the patient so for the reduction of repeat radiography we can use some steps that is the using of proper immobilization devices that means for the which radiograph which device we can use so that we can uh, get the better image quality like if we are using a chest radiography or abdominal radiography technique if we are using any extremity devices we can use these sandbags we can use the positioning devices so for the particular area of interest we have a particular using of immobilization devices and next we have a high ma technique and short exposure time if we are going to ex- increase our ma because if uh, you must i have heard about it because some have the experience working uh, students i found in the list so our equip- x-ray equipment comes with different ma station that is 50 ma 100 ma 200 300 500 1000 ma so suppose if we are have using a 500 ma equipment so for the pediatric patient we can use the 300 ma technique and we can reduce the exposure time so that the benefit of reducing the exposure time will be the patient motion blur will chances will be less over then and the reduce it will also reduce the radiation dose also so the accurate manual technique charts with the patient body weight should be used radiographic grid should be used only when the body part of exam as i told in earlier side can be examined more than 10 cm in thickness yes the gonadal protection the grades of child always uh, should always be shielded with the contact contact type shields unless such shields observe obscure the essential anatomy of the lower abdomen or pelvic area so this is how we can use the gonadal shield if you are doing the extremity body part exposure definitely then we have to use if you are using a, doing a chest radiograph or abdomen radiograph then we have to cover the thyroid gland as well as well the gonads so this is the uh, again important step that is the pre exam preparation for the pediatric radiography the following should be completed before the patient is brought into the room that is the the necessary immobilization and shielding devices should be in place like as i uh, explained the sandbags demo and thing on the bed sheets towel bandages and shielding devices and if is there parent assistant is required definitely the parent must be aware of that so we can so that so yes the necessary step is the uh, preparation of the room that is means the using which immobilization device and shielding device we are going to use we have to be uh, properly ready before entry to the patient also the which image receptor image receptor that means which cassette size or screen size we are going to use that should be always ready markers as we know the right and left marker we use in the radiography Uh, we are ready over there definitely the technique that means the setting of ma and kvp should be set the specific projection should have been determined which may acquire consultation with the radiologist together together they should clarify the role that each will play during the export procedure a suggested division of responsibility is have that assisting the technologies set techniques make exposures changing the irs and process the image while the primary technologies can position the patient instruct the parents and position the tube collimation and required shield in simple words if i say if there are two radiographer that working in a particular one room for the one pediatric patient so one can do a technical work on the technical uh, uh, areas that is the uh, setting of the ms and kvp changing the cassettes cassettes and developing the cassettes or reading the cassette into the cr or dr and the second radiographer can attend the patients or can be with the patient also can position the patient and can set the x ray tube collimation everything so he can uh, work he can work with the uh, patient side and the second radiographer can work on the machine side so team work will be more effective if we are using if we are doing the pediatric radiograph so is there any kind of technique that we have to be pre planned before entering the patient into the radiograph
child preparation after the child is brought into the room and procedure is explained to the child or parent satisfaction the parent or technologist must remove the cloths bandage or diapers if any body uh, if any near to the area of interest this is necessary to prevent these item from casting shadow and creating artifacts on the radiographic image because of the low exposure factors and using of the patient small size some pathological conditions we must aware of that so that the, we can acquire the better image on these pathological conditions number one is asthma so asthma is the most common in children and generally is caused by anxiety or allergy so airway are narrowed by the stimuli that do not affect the airway is normal in normal lung breathing is normal and increase the mucus in the lungs and may result to some increase in the radiographic in lung fields Radio density in lung fields. Next, we have a atelectasis. Next, we have a bronchitis. That is the conditions. There is a sorry irreversible winding of the bronchi result from acute infection or from congenital structure abnormalities of proportion of airway, and eventually creating an obstruction also. And the atelectastic is there is a condition that rather there is a disease which collapse of all the portion of the lungs occurs because of the obstruction of bronchus or puncture the bronchi. puncture or blow out of an any air passage next there are some other condition that is the croup or epiglottitis or we can say the supraglottitis the croup is the condition where it is occurs into the 1 to 3 year old children that is caused by viral infection and it is made evident by the struggle breathing and a harsh dry cough that is more frequent is accompanied by the fever also it is treated most commonly with the antibiotics but ap and lateral radiograph of the neck and upper airway may be required requested to demonstrate characteristically smooth but trap narrowing of the upper airway which is the more obvious in the ap projection for this condition we also use the soft tissue neck radiograph next we have a epiglottitis that is the bacterial infection in the epiglottis is the most common in children in between 2 to 5 year of age this is also a serious condition that can rapidly become fatal within hours of it onset and result from the blockage of the airway and caused by the swelling <clears throat> there are some also uh, other conditions with the radiograph to be exam that is the aspiration for this ap and lateral chest or ab and upper view can be acquired for the obstruction like in asthma p or lateral view for the lung collapse we can use the pr and lateral view with the slight increase now for the bronchitis we can also can use the pr and lateral view for the crook same the pr lateral and the ap view for the upper airway and for the epiglottis that is the ap lateral view and for the lateral ap lateral view for the chest and the uh, lateral view for the upper ear so the other conditions so celiac disease that is the, in this disease the hereditary disorder the certain protein found in wheat or like in wheat that is gluten cause an allergic reaction of intestinal lining resulting in the improper absorption of fats from the diet next is hepatomegaly hepatomegaly or is the enlargement of liver and a liver disease such as acute hepatitis cirrhosis and the bile duct obstruction next we have a congenital megacolon that is the hirschsprung's disease in this congenital condition the large intestines nerves that control the rhythmic contraction are missing this serious condition result in some constipation or vomiting it usually is corrected surgically by the correcting the distal portion of the novel part to the large intestine and it operate into the abdominal wall that is known as colic system next also the congenital congenital condition is horseshoe kidney that we is uh, more common to see in the uh, neonat or pediatric patient that is the two kidneys are joined together at their lower poles and they make the format of horse the kidneys are well rotated facing anteriorly and the ureter attached the kidney are the anterior rather than it's in normal medial aspect this is the most common type of kidney fusion anomaly next is hydronephrosis hydronephrosis or an enlarged kidney distended with urine is caused by the obstruction of urine it may result from the tumors kidney stone severe urinary tract infection congenital structure abnormality and extra next is inflammatory bowel disease The inflammatory bowel disease include the chronic disorder or inflammation of intestine. The two most common are Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, which have similar symptoms. That Crohn disease is an infection of the intestinal wall that may occur in the small and large intestines as well. Next is ulcerative colitis, that is the involves only in the large intestines and usually start with the rectum and sigmoid. So next we have the intestinal obstruction. In adults, the obstruction is caused most frequently by the fibrosis addition from the previous surgery. Newborns or infant, it is caused by caused by the birth defect such as the insufficient mm. volvulus or 
mechanism ileus so the ileus is which is also known as parietic ileus parietic ileus and anatomic ileus it is initially obstruction that is not a mechanical obstruction next is introspection introspection is a mechanical obstruction that is caused by the telescoping of a loop of intestine into the another loop and it is a most common in a region of the distal small bowel next is the mechanic ileus that is the mechanical obstruction wherever the intestinal contents become harder next is valvulus valvulus is a mechanical obstruction and caused by the twisting of intestines itself next with the tumor tumor is well known term there is the two types there is the malignant and benign malignant tumor cancers occurs less frequent in children than in the adults are more curable in the children neuroblastoma neuroblastoma associated with the childhood cancer generally is younger at occurs in the younger age there is the 12 five years they occurs in the part of nervous system most frequent in the adrenal glands and next is the willems tumor willems tumor indicate a cancer of kidney or uh, femur and congenital renal crown we can use the ap or we can use the gastrointestinal series that is we can do the barium studies or endoscopics or hydronephrosis that is we can most frequently the acute abdominal series that is the small bowel series or barium enema for the polaric stenosis we can use the upper gi tract like upper gi gastrointestinal barium studies or ultrasound and for the tumors we can use the x-ray ct mri which one is effective so that we can make a proper diagnosis